next time. Sounds like those cowboys are getting started early. This is our problem anymore. Be nice to have so much care. Be okay, nice. I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. shot wearing a badge he had no business wearing. At least that fool tried, White. That's more than I can say for us. What are you doing with that badge? Virgil, we did not come down here again bald in law again. If this town's gonna make it, it's gotta have some law and order. No, Virgil, they have their own law. You can't do this. Vir Virgil, that's not what we're here for. It's like Dodge City all over again. We can't talk to him when he gets like this. Get some coffee going. We'll talk later. All this time. Tell me, old friend, how was Tucson? Well, the festival was a bust, if you must know. Plenty of money to be had, but none of it rubbed off on me. Ah. Uh, but enough about me. How is respectable business treating you? Doc, I'll tell you, Tombstone's the place to be. It's almost as if you could reach out and plug the money right off the trees around here. You said the same thing about Dodge City, Platt. It's different this time. I'm through risking my neck. Strictly on the up and up. At least until the elections are over. Isn't that right? So you've heard of my intentions? I can already picture. Wyatt Earp, county sheriff. You ain't changed a bit. Well, Doc, there is something important I need to discuss with you. Oh? It's Ike Clay. He's on a warpath this time. He's got it for you. He's got it in his head. You've been running your mouth about his involvement with this Benson stagecoach holdup. So what if I have? Ike Clanton is a no-good snake in the grass, betraying his friends like that, and, oh, what, some blood money from Wells Fargo? I made that deal with Ike. Look, he'd get all the money, I'd get all the glory. Sure, that deal would have helped me come election time. Does that make me some snake in the grass? No, Wyatt, you wear a gun and a badge. You're doing your job. Ike Clanton has no such excuse. Man, he sells out his friends like that. No business living. I would appreciate it if you just mind your business where this is concerned, Doc. If I Clanton comes my way, it becomes my business, Wyatt. I handle my business the proper way. We don't need this. Us Earths, we're doing real well here in Tombstone. See that Oriental? It's a gold mine. Virgil's town marshal, and yes, 
I'm well on my way to becoming county sheriff. We don't need anyone to interfere with that. Very well, Wyatt. I will not be the one to upset your little plan. Well, that's all I ask. Enough of this talk. You show me your best bottle of whiskey. Oh, I knew it was coming. Join me inside. Are you still drinking old Overholt? You know me too well, Wyatt. Hey. Oh, my God. Hey. Half of mine says we go back down there and we show them who's boss. We ain't going back down to the old home, right? That's just trouble we don't need. Uh, what I need is another drink. Oh. Yeah, and by the looks of you two, I could use one too. <laughs> well, now, don't you think you had enough for now? But don't you think that maybe I would tell you when I've had enough? Uh-huh. Well, then you just quit trying to rope me in, all right? Well, well this gun's not even loaded. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I never point a loaded gun at your face. That's just rude. <laughs> You're by <laughs> Bartender! But, but barcade whiskey! I hear our hair clip beating on the floor! are in this town now. Ten? Fifteen? There's five, like. Oh. Plenty enough to handle you, boy. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean, huh? What do you want to mean? Yeah. Yeah. We're just here to have some fun. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you look at that? There's that hunger, Doc Holliday. Yeah, I bet he's out there spreading more lies about me. I do believe I've ever only told the truth about you, Ike. You're a drunken fool. Yeah, what was that, Bobby? We don't need this now. It's not to worry, Tom. Nothing will come of it. See, Ike talks, and he talks, but he never does back up any of those threats. Now he's just a coward. You better watch your mouth, Holiday. Don't make me kill you. I'm through with your words, Clanton. You threaten me. You threaten the earth so I'm sick of hearing. What do you say we settle this blood feud here and now? All right, then, let's say that we do, huh? <laughs> Come in! And I have my gun back, please. No, I said please. Oh, thank you. It What's it gonna be then, Ike? You can see I ain't fixed for it now. But if I was, I would take my gun and I would Doc. I'll kill you anyway, do this kind of faith. I'll be real easy to I get that enough, you boys get out of here. Morgan, you arrest him. He pulled that gun on me. Oh, this guy, oh, what? Well, Doc, enough! You boys clout before you get more fun you can handle. Tom, you check that gun, it's your responsibility. Well, yeah, yeah. That was fun. You have a strange idea of fun, Doc. Perhaps. So long, Mr. to find myself suddenly bored. Come on out.
And I reckon it's about time we fetch all this fight and talk to a close. As you boys are gonna do as I say. You tell your pal Holiday I'll be waiting for him in the morning. He'll go somewhere, pass out, and forget about the whole thing, Wyatt. Virgil, when has our luck ever been that good? Remember? Never? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen up. 
I tat his bunnies, paid his fine, he's free to go. I want you to load this drunken fool up and get him out of here. And I don't want to see any more cowboys the rest of the day. Virgil, you got no business talking to us like that. I'll talk to you any way I want, McClowry. I'm the law in this town. You're nothing but stage robbers and horse thieves. Sheriff Behan may not care what goes on between here and Mexico, but I do. Sheriff Behan's a smart man and leaves us alone. He's gonna find himself living a nice, long, and happy life. Unlike some people. Is that you making threats again there, right? Of course not, Morgan. When I say men die, they die. All right, that's enough. Ike, I've dealt with men like you my whole life. You don't scare me. I'll go down to Charleston, down to San Simone. I'll fight every man in your gang. If you touch my family, I will kill you. An awful lot of tough talk, Wyatt. Just a shame it's coming out of a dead man. Boys, you've tried to run us out of this town, but we're still here, and we're not leaving! But all this ends today, White. I'm done talking. Let's go, boys. Shut up. <laughs> There's gonna be more of those cowboys in town any minute. What about their big guns? Curly Bill or Johnny Ringo? Don't worry about that. If Ike gets himself shot, it's just more spoils for the rest of them. If the raid he's going, that just might happen, Wyatt. He's drunk and suspicious, Virgil. He knows about that deal we made to turn in them stage robbers. But if Curly Bill or Ringo find out, it's not gonna sit well. He buries us, he buries the secret. That's right. What is going on out here, Wyatt? Doc, I'll tell you. Police business, Doc. Nothing here for you. There's more cowboys in town, Virgil. They're gunning for you. Looks to me like you could use all the friends you could get. We can handle those cowboys just fine on our own, Doc. They're not far from here. They're an empty lot behind the OK Corral on Fremont. They look to me business, boys. They got guns. Then we can take those guns away from them. All right, Doc, if you're coming with us, you're going to do it my way. I want you to hang back. Hold on to this. <laughs> Let's go.
Frank McClowry, dead. Tom McClowry, dead. 19-year-old Billy Clayton, dead. And that was it. Over before it ever started. Two months after this gunfight, Virgil Lurk was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, Verge wandered the west till death found him in Nevada in 1905. Not as lucky was Wyatt's brother Morgan, shot in the back and killed, playing a game of pool up on Allen Street. Morgan died at midnight, March 19th, 1882. His brother Wyatt's birthday. Now in 1887, the year this whole town began to fall apart, the two main causes of this gunfight died hundreds of miles apart from each other. That summer, putting together a new gang in northern Arizona, Ike Clanton was shot and killed by a mail order detective. <laughs> <laughs> Not long after that, a lifetime of drinking, smoking, and bad decisions caught up with yours truly, Colorado. I don't care to talk about it. <laughs> Wyatt Earp was the last man standing. Wyatt spent the rest of his days traveling. Went from Idaho to Alaska, finally ending in Jazz H. Hollywood, looking for another tombstone and a chance to get things right. He never did find it. When he died in Los Angeles in 1929, just ahead of his 81st birthday, his last word, suppose, suppose. And that, folks, is our show. We hope you enjoyed it.